How and why should public health be involved with mental health issues? Stick around and find out. Firstly, I just want to quickly talk about what it is that we mean by mental health. And we all know about depression, anxiety, bipolar, mood disorder, schizophrenia, etc. But there's also a side of mental health, the positive attributes of keeping well, of keeping a positive attitude, of good, strong relationships, of an ability to work, etc., etc. And a big part of mental health is nurturing that side of ourselves. So even well people have an interest in mental health because each of us should be trying to foster a good mental health within ourselves. A little bit of context. My name is Greg Martin. I am a medical doctor and I have worked in psychiatry both in South Africa and in Ireland. I work now in public health. And so I'm very interested in how we can use the tools, the public health tools, to address mental health issues. All right, so let's get stuck in. So in the next few minutes, I wanna talk about how we can use public health tools to address mental health. So here's the bag of tricks. These are the public health tools I want to apply in the mental health space. Firstly, prevention. Next, screening and early detection. Next, surveillance. In other words, quantifying and tracking the problem. And then of course, improving access to services. Advocacy and policy change. Research collaboration and integration, so an all of society approach, crisis intervention and support, cultural sensitivity and inclusiveness, and helping vulnerable and hard to reach populations get access to the care and treatment they need. Now, a lot of what we talk about falls under the heading of health promotion or health improvement, and we're gonna start off with prevention, right? So our first category is prevention. And in terms of prevention of mental health disorders, I think there's, there's three opportunities to think about. First of all, early detection. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about early detection in, in just a minute when we talk about screening. But early detection, so this often involves training educators, parents, and health professionals to recognize early signs of mental illness. Next is reducing risk factors. And this can be through providing safe spaces and support groups for people that have experienced trauma or abuse or addressing things like alcohol abuse. Okay, and that brings us to the third one, which is policies. And this can include legislation aimed at controlling the sale and distribution of alcohol and other substances. Now let's talk about screening. And of course, this relates to the first point because it's about early detection, but we could instill routine screening. So for example, uh, integrate mental health assessments into regular medical checkups. And part of this is really also identifying at-risk individuals. So not just people that are unwell, but people that might be at risk of becoming unwell. That could be about their family history, it could be their own history, it could be about environmental factors. Another public health tool that's important in the mental health space is surveillance, quantifying the problem and tracking the change over time. Right, so we want to monitor trends, right? So number one, quantify the problem, collect data on mental health issues. Number two, monitor trends over time and try to identify driving factors that are changing those trends. Number three, track changes. Okay, you can use data to observe the impact of new mental health policies, programs, or interventions over time. And finally, utilizing data. And what I mean by that is data can help us tailor interventions to the specific needs of specific communities. Public health is always interested in access to services. And of course, with respect to mental health, we want the right access to be available to the right people at the right time. Our first subheading would be availability of services. So for example, we could create a mobile health clinic that serves underserved populations at particular times. Next, training providers. And this really involves giving primary care providers the tools and the knowledge to offer basic mental health care and referrals. And number three, integration into primary care. And by this, I mean implementing programs where mental health professionals work alongside primary care physicians. Now let's talk about policy and advocacy. The first thing on policy I wanna talk about is addressing the social determinants of health. And here, for example, you could have policies aimed at improving housing and employment opportunities to alleviate some of the stresses that contribute to mental illness. Next, anti-stigma campaigns. Okay, and this could include public service announcements and education programs that challenge the myths and misconceptions around mental illness. And finally, mental health legislation. And by this, I mean, you can have laws that ensure that the rights and the needs of those with mental illnesses are met. And that includes access to care and protection from discrimination. Okay, let's talk about research. Here we can study the effectiveness of different therapeutic interventions across different populations. And we can evaluate programs. Regular assessment of public health initiatives to ensure that they're meeting the intended goals and that they are cost effective. Next, collaboration and integration. 
Firstly, multi-sectoral collaboration. And by this, I mean joint initiatives between schools, healthcare facilities, and other community organizations to address mental health. And of course, integrated mental health. And by this, I mean incorporating mental health awareness and support into programs for chronic diseases like diabetes or heart disease, etc. Now let's talk about crisis intervention and support. Here we've got firstly crisis services. So we could establish a 24 seven helpline for immediate mental health support where it's needed. And added to that support and follow up, right? So here we want providing ongoing care and resources to individuals and communities who have experienced traumatic events or mental health episodes. Here, of course, we mean ongoing support and follow up for people that have mental illness or mental health problems, but also resources to individuals and communities who've experienced a traumatic event. Next, cultural sensitivity and inclusiveness. Now, this is a big public health issue. Firstly, we need to promote the respect of cultural differences. This means understanding various cultural perspectives when providing care and treatment for people that need it. And then, and then added to that, culturally appropriate programs. Here we want to develop mental health services that are linguistically and culturally accessible to a diverse population. And finally, I want to talk about addressing vulnerable and hard to reach populations. So firstly, we need targeted interventions. So for example, we need specialized programs for homeless individuals or those with limited access to traditional health care services. Next, we need to develop outreach programs. Outreach efforts are often needed if we want to engage those who are either mistrustful or unaware of traditional mental health services. And finally, we need to be agile and we need to be adapting services. So we need to offer, for example, telehealth services for individuals in remote areas that can't access services in the traditional way. So what to watch next? I recommend that you watch this video. There's a card on the screen right now. And it's about health equity and health equality. You'll love it. Take care. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Speak to you soon. Bye.